Now on KGW News, we've done it again. For the third day in a row, Portland's broken a record for the all-time hottest day. I mean, they say it's hot, but this is hot, hot. The heat tonight causing roads to buckle power equipment to fail, and fires to spread fast. It's also sent some people to the hospital. Calls to emergency medical services are at levels that we've never seen before in our region. Plus, some fire officials are pushing for an all-out ban on fireworks this year. It's just too dangerous out there. And, oh yeah, it's a big day in Oregon's vaccination effort, as names are drawn in the lottery. First tonight, can you hear that? There's a collective sigh of relief from around the area right now. Temperatures have dropped and fast, falling from another record high set today. Let's check in first with Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino. Matt, are we finally done with those triple digits? We are. You know, when that south wind kicked in and overtook the region, I think everybody was like, oh, finally, it <laughs> right. has cooled on off. Look at the temperatures hour by hour today. It's pretty remarkable. 115 at 4 o'clock, 114 at 5 o'clock, and then it actually shot up to 116 before coming back to 114 at 6, still over 110 at 7, then down to 97, then 90, now 82 at 10 o'clock. So that has been the progression during the overnight hours, and boy, does it feel good. In fact, we're down to 79 degrees right now. That south wind still cooking up at 13 miles an hour. Look at the temperature differences between now and this time last night. We had barely dropped out of the 90s at 11 o'clock last night. So Portland's running 10 degrees cooler, but McMinnville is 22 degrees cooler and Corvallis is a ridiculous 31 degrees cooler than they were 24 hours ago. Last hour, they were 36 degrees cooler because they were 99 at 10 o'clock last night and have now dropped down down to 64 degrees. So we're at 79 in Portland, 70 in McMinnville. There's the 62 in Corvallis, 64 in Eugene. It really is turned into a really lovely evening as everybody gets to cool down. The records though, Portland 116. Downtown Portland, right here at KGW, we recorded 114 degrees. These are all new all-time record highs. Salem hit 117. That's only two shy of Oregon's all-time record high. Hood River 109 and the Dallas 118. That is only one degree shy of Oregon's all-time record high. So the cooler marine air has arrived. It has flooded into the Willamette Valley. Valley highs will remain below 95, some low 90s, but really not bad. And there's even the potential for some showers around the middle of next week. So, yes, the heat wave has ended. Laurel? Ah, uh, a lovely evening. We haven't said that for a few days. Right. Thank you, Matt. The sharp drop in temperature is welcome news for the thousands without power tonight. More than 10,000 people are in the dark in Multnomah County alone. We don't know yet if heat is to blame for all of the outages. PGE says the electric grid has held up, but some equipment has not. We know that these extended periods of high heat put some strain on the electrical equipment within our system and sometimes that can cause it to break down. PGE says these past several days could be an all time record for electrical use. And take a look tonight at some of the damage the heat has caused. Several roads have, have just buckled. This is what it looks like along Denver Avenue in the Kenton neighborhood. A two block stretch is closed off right now between Interstate Avenue and McClellan Street. Part of McClellan Street is also blocked off. Peabot says it's still investigating the cause, but believes it's heat related. Peabot hasn't said how long the road will be closed. Tonight's break from the heat was certainly hard earned, especially for our neighbors with limited options for staying cool. Catherine Cook spent the evening in Vancouver to see how people there got through. A lot of homes, especially those in apartment communities, don't have air conditioning. That drives tenants to go to extreme or at least creative measures to stay cool. I said, this is it. I'm getting a watermelon. It stuck it in the freezer. Fran Wong didn't want to open her door too wide, and we couldn't blame her here. In Vancouver, it feels like someone's blasting you with a hot hair dryer. Without AC, it's about defending against the heat. Doors and curtains shut, lots of cool showers, drinking plenty of water, and whatever else brings relief. The arms flapping so that you can keep the air going past your arms. I don't know, I call it the wing. Get the air going that way. The heat forced a lot of businesses to close. Even tropical snow, 
a popular shaved ice stand down the street. We're hoping to come and get some good shaved ice. And, well, we're kind of bummed that it's closed. The temperature gauge quickly reminds us why. It says 117. No shaved ice, but there are other ways to cope. Stay in a cool place, shade, trees, go to the river. We've been down to the water. The river has been the only way for Anita and her son to cool off as best they can. It's hard to stay hydrated and everything. I mean, just my lungs felt like they were burning earlier just walking to go meet him, and it, it was horrible. As the sun sets, there is promise of relief. Temperatures dipping into the 80s calls for praise and opening this door a little wider. And it's funny because you got everybody's got their windows open with their fans going and sitting outside. In Vancouver, they say it's hot. Catherine Cook. But this is KGW News. Hot. It's sad, isn't it? There's yeah. not very many people out. For many, even traditional standbys for cooling off couldn't cut it today. Some were still making the most of the fountain at Director Park in downtown Portland. Others were hitting the movies. Capacity restrictions in theaters were lifted over the weekend by Governor Kate Brown to allow more people to chill out. Some people we talked with tried everything possible to relax, but they finally decided on an old tradition. Oh, for sure. About to go see one. I don't know what I'm going to go see, but, you know, with the summer heat, time for spontaneity, I guess. Yeah. Those capacity restrictions for certain venues are basically gone for good. On Wednesday, Oregon will fully reopen its economy for the first time in more than 15 months. The heat has been dangerous for some. Multnomah County has seen a spike in heat-related emergency and urgent care visits. There were 43 visits from Friday through Sunday. And officials say on a normal summer weekend, they would see maybe one or two heat-related cases in the same span. Absolutely is unprecedented. We have shattered records uh, in terms of temperatures, uh, in terms of the length of time of the heat wave. So no one that I work with in recent memory has seen just the numbers um, that we have seen. So we've been using unprecedented over and over in the last year, and this is, this is another one uh, that is new territory for us. Meantime, Multnomah County Emergency Medical Services has been extremely busy. On Saturday alone, it received more than 400 calls. It's not clear exactly how many are heat related, but the county called the high call volume, quote, unheard of. Fire crews are busy all over the area today fighting brush and house fires. This is what a triplex fire in Milwaukee looked like from above. Look at all that black smoke. Two nearby buildings on Courtney Avenue also caught fire. 11 people and one dog are displaced, but thankfully no one was hurt. And a huge house right along the Columbia River in Vancouver caught fire this afternoon. No one was home at the time. The house was destroyed, but a home next door was saved. This was a difficult firefight. In addition to the heat and some strong winds, it was hard to access the house and there were no fire hydrants nearby. A firefighter also had to go to the hospital for a heat related illness. When we see how fast flames can spread right now, it has many worried about the 4th of July and fireworks. Tim Gordon checked in at a fireworks stand today and with a Clark County fire chief who is calling for a ban. There is no escaping the irony that on a day of record setting heat and dangerous fire conditions, fireworks stands are stocked up and selling. Although fireworks are not allowed in Vancouver, they are in most of the rest of the county for the 4th of July. Fire Chief John Knorr of Clark Cowlitz Fire and Rescue wishes they weren't. He represents all Clark County Fire Chiefs in strongly discouraging the use of fireworks by anyone this 4th of July. We want people to enjoy their family, enjoy their friends. We want people to do it safely. I want to see fireworks banned this year. It's just too dangerous out there. Some people are going to have the opportunity to use fireworks. If they do, they must take the utmost in caution and do it safely. Nor's district includes Northwest Clark County, but also a couple of cities that have banned fireworks. Both Ridgefield and La Center have said no to fireworks because of the extreme weather conditions. Back at the TNT Fireworks Warehouse, General Manager Bo Leach knows fire conditions are awful right now. But you're breaking the law if you light today and you should get in trouble. And so that's what I, my stance is. I'll sell it today, but that doesn't mean you need to light it today. We want you to wait until the 4th of July and then I think we can all enjoy it safely. This year, just blow it out of the water. It is hard to stop the excitement for some, even in the heat. 
But Renee Vetter says they'll be careful on the 4th. If it's going to be windy and super hot, we certainly wouldn't shoot them off. We really practice it ourselves. I don't like being told I can't have them because it's American tradition. It's, it's summertime. It's America. This summer is extraordinary so far. And in fireworks friendly Clark County, Chief Noor says he's had plenty of support for stopping the fireworks altogether, something the fire marshal and county leaders could do countywide if they wanted to. It's running three to one. I've had a few people who feel like I'm taking away their fun. I understand that, but these are unprecedented weather times. And we want to let you know the cities of Camas and Washougal have also banned fireworks for this 4th of July.